Good evening, shareholders of Simcorp Marine. Thank you for joining us today at the SIAS Simcorp Marine Virtual Dialogue session. SIS is organize, organizing this session to allow you to engage in a dialogue with the senior management of Simcorp Marine to hear the details and their views of the proposed combination between Simcorp Marine and Keppel Offshore and Marine and to seek answers for your questions. On the 27th of April, 2022, Simcorp Marine and Keppel Corp jointly announced that they have entered into definitive agreements for the proposed combination it involves the establishment of a new holding company, the combined entity, which will combine the businesses of Sumcorp Marine and Keppel O&M via separate schemes of arrangement. Sumcorp Marine believes that the proposed combination will create a premier global player with a deep en engineering heritage that will offer offshore renewables, new energy and cleaner solutions in the o &M sector. In the definitive agreements, the proposed combination was based on 50-50 enterprise value ratio using discounted cash flow, DCF, methodology approach conduct, conducted by DBS Bank Limited, which acted as the joint financial advisor. It is also published that the equity value exchange ratio of the combined entity being held by 44% Simcorp Marine shareholders and 56% Keppel Corporation Limited and its shareholders. This was agreed on after due diligence and negotiations that considered the respective capital structure of the two companies, especially the different net debt levels being approximately $2.0 billion for Simcorp Marine and $0.3 billion for Keppel O&M. Is the proposed combination necessary and fair to you shareholders? What is ahead for the combined entity in future? Who will manage the new entity? Who will be on the board are your questions. What happens to Simcorp Marine should the combination go through? Will you be better off or worse off? The proposed combination has generated significant interest among retail shareholders. I wish to remind shareholders to listen very carefully to all sides of the story and give due consideration to the issues at hand before reaching a decision on the future of Simcorp Marine. You have to make your own decision that is good for you and not rely on third parties' views. That is why SIAS is keen on this dialogue being organized for your benefit only. Today, we have invited senior management of Sumcorp Marine to join us at this dialogue. I welcome Mr. Wong Wing Sun, President and CEO, and Mr. William Go, Group Finance Director. Thank you, gentlemen. We will kick off the session with a presentation by Mr. Wong and Mr. William to share insights on proposed combinations followed by a Q&A session moderated by my Vice President, Mr. Lo Wanchen. Please submit your questions via the Q&A function of the Zoom webinar, webinar and the management will endeavor to address them all. So without further ado, Mr. Wong, and Mr. William, over to you to take us through with the presentation that you have. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Good evening, David and Wan Chen. And thank you, CRS, for organizing this shareholder dialogue. Good evening to Sanko Marine shareholders. Thank you for taking time to be with us today. Towards the end of April this year, we announced the proposed combination of Samco Marine and KOM. This is a significant milestone for Samco Marine and a culmination of our strategic business transformation journey that was started in 2015. 
we believe that the combined entity will have resilient foothold in the offshore, marine, and energy sector. At the same time, it will allow us to accelerate our advance into cleaner and cleaner O&M, renewables, mm -hmm. and new energy market. As you know, the industry is evolving extremely rapidly. We have taken concrete steps in the past years to position Sapco Marine at the center of the global transition to a low carbon economy. There are exciting opportunities ahead, which we have already identified. We are now taking this defining bold step, one that is transformational almost instantly. With the proposed combination, we will have greater skill and resources to address the US 260 billion offshore renewables market and US 290 billion worth of O&M opportunities. If we stay status quo, there will be severe challenges ahead of us. Already, there are bigger, fiercely competitive players out there. They are also readying themselves for the future. Like them, we must evolve. We need a transformative change that will allow us to scale up and address the competition. With our combined engineering and R&D capabilities, enhanced operational and financial muscle, we will be much better positioned for the road ahead and much more resilient and able to weather the challenges. We want to seize market opportunity. However, without the combination, there will be certainly operational manpower and other resource challenges and pressure that comes along. Since the announcement, we have received feedback from our shareholders and we are very appreciative of these open lines of communication. In our interaction with our institutional and retail shareholders, many have welcomed and expressed support for the proposed combination. We understand also that some have questions about it, which William and I hope to address during today's session. The board and management of Samco Marine believe the proposed combination is the best interest for all shareholders. I now pass to William, who will share some key information on the proposed combination. William, please. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Um, once again, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for taking time to uh, join this dialogue, and thanks, Sias, for facilitating. Uh, we thought that before we go to specific Q&A, based on the feedback we received from our shareholders, like yourself, we thought it's helpful to give an overall snapshot on two key aspects of this merger. Firstly, why are we proposing the merger? And secondly, how some of the key terms, especially the merger ratio, uh, were derived. So I want slide each to address these two points and very quickly to the first slide. So this first slide, uh, there are, you can see a total of five columns. On the left-hand column, it basically show the market trends and hence the context that catalyzed this proposed merger. The next two columns summarize what each party brings to the table, and probably more importantly, the challenges that each party faces in that sense. And the next column on the right um, shows if the merger proceeds, how the combined entity is better positioned to take on the industry challenges. And finally, on the rightmost column, um, specifically, how SEM will benefit with the merger proceeding. So let me very quickly cover each of these columns. Uh, without too much detail, uh, you can see the, the bullets uh, for yourself. Uh, but basically, we know that the energy transition is increasingly clear, especially in the last few years. And this catalyzed demand for renewable energy as well as new energy solutions. And you see the market size there. At the same time, oil and gas market, due to underinvestment over the last several years, 
and also a recent oil price rally, the demand for oil and gas solutions is also recovering well. But while the overall industry outlook is improving, there is also a very clear trend of global consolidation of yacht players, even if they are already large by themselves. And this includes the largest Chinese yachts, the Koreans, as well as the Japanese. The, the question is, why are they doing that? It's because in order to respond to the rapidly changing industry landscape, it requires investments, developments of new technologies, engineering, and execution capabilities. And, and this requires focus and the need to adopt a longer term perspective before you see returns for such efforts. So in short, the global players see the need to merge, to be stronger operationally and financially, to respond to the above changing landscape. So the question is that if other large players globally are merging, then all the more Singapore players should. Otherwise, if they merge and we don't, then the competition gap will just increase even more. Let me very quickly go into the next column, the value proposition of each player. For SCM, quite clear cut, we have new yard capabilities and capacities. We've acquired technologies, design, engineering capabilities. We have a decent uh, global footprint, although not in all countries, and track record and customer relationships. The challenges we face is that while we have invested in a significant yard capabilities and capacities, but with the changing industry landscape and the very hungry global competing yards, we may or may not be able to win sufficient orders each year to feed our yards. And at the same time, because we invested a few billion dollars in these yard capabilities for the future, we have incurred gross debt, which is more than $3 billion. And banks, understandably, are interested to understand how we go about repaying them over the next years. On the KOM side, very briefly, they have a strong order book of 5.1 billion, um, almost four times ours of 1.3 as the end of last year. They arguably have a more global footprint and rich. For example, they have a US yard, which can be a, a promising uh, market. They have uh, equal good track record and customer relationship and the relatively asset-like business model and therefore uh, lower gross debt levels. Um, there are challenges, if we may, one can argue that the yard is older, so may not be as well positioned to take on certain types of opportunities in the energy transition. But we now look more importantly, what happens if the merger proceeds? How the CE, combined entity, will be better positioned for the longer term future? You can see from the chart very clearly the synergies and competencies and capabilities. These will enable better and faster response to the energy transition, leveraging on the global footprint and relationships to secure more orders. Essentially, the combined entity will certainly be more competitive, achieving greater scale and cost efficiencies, operating leverage in this case here. And also, as a single player representing Singapore Inc., we can expect banks to be also more supportive and therefore facilitate credit growth and credit access for future growth. In short, a stronger and more sustainable operational and financial position for the CE. These benefits are clearly applicable to the CE and therefore to SEMCOP Marine. But just to be specific on SEMCOP Marine, you look at on the right-hand side now, growth. With the combined entity, with SCM combining with KOM, the growth can be accelerated. We will be more agile, a faster response to the evolving market trends with the greater scale and broader geographical footprint. And probably more importantly is that while we are agile and we can grow, we need to be also have a certain level of stability. And this is very important because of the nature of industry, which is cyclical in that sense. So overall, we are talking about a more resilient uh, uh, SEM through the combined entity to weather the future market volatilities. And ultimately, what really matters to our shareholders is sustainable financial returns with better growth prospects, more agile, lower operational risk, the overall earnings quality and long-term sustainability of returns to shareholders is much more better underpinned. 
So in summary for this slide, the strategic business rationale for the merger is very clear and not merging is not an option. Let me pause here and then move on to the next slide. For this second slide, it's very much addressing some of the questions that were asked. What valuation methodology is appropriate for the merger and how the merger ratio is arrived at? And, and a lot of feedback that we get talks about well, why is it used the DCF, the design of cash flow methodology, and not, for example, the NTA as a basis for valuation. Let us say that uh, there are many ways to evaluate a merger, but it's always most objective to look at the fundamental principles. Why merger? Merger is looking at the long-term mutual contribution of each party to the combined entity. And therefore, the value contribution is best measured more by the short and long-term cash flow generation contributed by each party and not the upfront current situation, for example, like the level of uh, net assets, which is a static measure and the measuring, in this case here, end of last year. Of course, to be fair, petitioners will say that different industries offer different dynamics and therefore different weightage to some of these metrics. So for example, if you're a property development or investment company, your portfolio of properties injected into the merger certainly is a strong reflection of future cash flow generation. But in our case, in the O&M industry, while yet assets quality and capacity definitely helps, Objectively speaking, because of the global competition, with a better yard quality and capacity, there is still no assurance, as we mentioned earlier, of securing enough orders quickly. On the other hand, if another yard does not have such kind of a yard capability and capacity, it also doesn't mean that they can't secure enough traditional orders uh, 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 to, to, uh, to uh, support uh, and contribute to long-term cash flows. So in short, in our yard business, the net tangible asset is not the appropriate measure, not the key driver for the valuation for sure. Whereas the discounted cash flow methodology provides such measure of cash flow contribution, both for the short as well as the long term. And just to mention that in DCF, it takes into account current orders, near term and longer term orders, and also the associated margins to provide the performance measure. And while the future, one can argue in many ways, one objective way to evaluate the future is to look back at the historical trend and historical performance. And given the nature of the industry, cyclical, as you mentioned earlier, uh, a longer term 10-year historical performance would be a relevant indicator of future performance, adjusting, of course, for any evolving industry landscape or strategy. So basically, based on all these above considerations, uh, it drives the mutual agreement by both companies to adopt the DCF methodology and also the associated key assumptions and basis used. So I hope that clarifies why the DCF is used and uh, some of the assumptions that's also being adopted. Let me move on to the uh, outcome of this DCF methodology. So on the right-hand side, you see that from the outcome analysis, uh, we end up having a 50-50 enterprise value ratio. So in short, the assessment on this year basis resulted in a merger of equal, a 50-50 enterprise value ratio. And then from the enterprise value to the uh, equity value exchange ratio is a relatively standard approach whereby you adjust for the deadline items. And because uh, SCM has a much higher net debt of uh, 2 billion compared to a uh, KOM of 0 0.3 billion, the outcome factoring also other adjustments uh, is an equity value exchange ratio of 44.56. Now, naturally, SEM management will argue for a higher ratio, but likewise KOM management as well. You know, so, so, so this will be a, an argument that, that both sides will want to improve for themselves. But at the end of the day, with the objective assessment, we also want to say that for SEM standpoint, one key consideration for us accepting this 4456 is the fact that all the legacy risks uh, from a KOM is being 
are being excluded from uh, this uh, uh, merger. In other words, the four billion odd of uh, legacy rigs that may have questions regarding uh, their disposal at what price, any possible losses right down in the future, all these things are removed from the restructured KOM coming in the combined entity. And probably more importantly, is that an equal amount of liabilities uh, for over billion is also removed from the restructured KOM balance sheet so that the KOM coming in with low debt and contribute to reduce gearing and this will enable more debt headroom for future growth by the combined entity. So in a sense, the restructured KOM coming into the combined entity is a lower or de-risk KOM, which is therefore beneficial to the CE and beneficial to SCM. So overall, we felt that the uh, merger terms rightly factor in firstly, the longer term perspective, and secondly, both quantitative and qualitative factors. And in a sense, that's how management was supportive of the combi terms because we believe the approach and the terms are all within reasonable range. So that's uh, the uh, summary for these two slides. Uh, we uh, can, maybe one chat, I pass back to you. We can progress straight to Q&A. Thanks, Mr. Goh, uh, for the presentation and the clarification. Uh, there's quite a fair bit of question on the valuation and on the numbers. So I'll give you a, a couple of minutes to look through them while I go to Mr. Wong. Uh, Mr. Wong, there's a, there's a question from, uh, you see, Mr. Clarence Chong on the future of San Marine and what happens if the merger doesn't go through in terms of the combination. Maybe at this juncture, uh, maybe you can share with us, Mr. Wong, what's the good thing about the combination, the bad thing, and what can really get ugly uh, in terms of the combination if it doesn't go through? Mr. Wong? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it is quite interesting. Uh, let me let me let me uh, 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 share my take on this. Yeah, what's the, the good? The good, the good yeah. first. Well, this is a lifetime opportunity, or the last opportunity. Why? SEM to have opportunity that able to merge with a restructured KOM, restructured KOM. This is free from legacy risks. Having low debt is a reputable and having now restructured a core marine and offshore player with its existing capacity and capability that comes with healthy on the boat. And this brings benefit to SEM. And what this good translate into SEM, that means SEM's combination with a restructured KOM means an immediate step up in terms of scale, capabilities, and operational reach to tap into opportunities that compete on a global stage in this new energy era. And instant optimization of Central Marine's larger newer yachts with the enlarged order book of the combined entity with resultant financial and operating benefit. There is a turn from the market that they are required an active reinvestment for a greener oil and gas. But with a short, very short time, it is opportunity for us to be able to optimize this and able to capture this opportunity. And again, the immediate un unlocking of synergies from the integration of two established industrial players. We so are the, actually the good, on the same. So long, the good is, is quite clear. How about, how about the bad? Well, the bad will be, we all know, staying status quo is not an option for Sankor Marine. So mm -hmm. if the merger does not happen, Sankor Marine will have to go alone in the increasingly competitive landscape. Navigating the ongoing transition to a low carbon economy, which is 
gathering in pace, face its competition, which is pushing ahead with their consolidation plan. Sure, SCM will have to consider other organic or inorganic options. This will take time to become a reality. Will so time be on ask, our side? Time is not on your and side. Not on our side. Now, I would like to go to the ugly. The ugly can be real ugly. We all know Kepler's 2030 vision will be rolled out. Kepler is divesting KOM business. If the proposed combination is not successful, could KOM be acquired by a competitor? Will this opportunity for a proposed combination be lost forever? And it is not just a loss for Sankong Green. It has implications for Singapore as well. Are we all ready to face this real ugly? And what's the worst case scenario, Mr. Wong? That would be the worst, worst case. And there is a lot of ecosystem in Singapore. There is a lot of uh, 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 engineers, supervisors, project management team, which are excellent, top class, and in this industry in Singapore. And we will be affected. And on that score, uh, thanks, Mr. Wong, for the for the, your explanation on the good and the bad and ugly with regards to, to the situation right now for San Marine in terms of the combination. Not easy uh, in terms of the choices facing San Marine. Uh, maybe we go over to, to Mr. Go now. There's a couple of violations, uh, questions from Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen Lee. Uh, one of the technical questions he's asked is that, uh, has the uh, valuation taken into account the, uh, the newness of the uh, yards between San Marine and, and Capo Corp? Um, thanks, thanks for the question. Uh, certainly, all these factors are taken into consideration. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, the quality and newness of the yards are certainly relevant. Uh, but what ultimately drives is the ability to uh, generate and secure orders, which will then translate into revenue as well as margins. So yes, they are taken into consideration. But uh, the cash flow generation for DCF methodology uh, 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 would capture that accordingly. Thanks, Mr. Go. Another question from Mr. Alan Lee. Uh, you know, you've you presented in your slides the, uh, the, the rationale for the technical computation uh, and the financial justification. Uh, what's, what's the view of management and the board based on what the, the computations have? Now, what's, what's the net net bottom line? What, what's your feeling of it? What's, what do you uh, what, judge? What do we talk about net bottom line you're referring to? In terms of, is it the, is it the right the number? Is it, uh, does it disadvantage anybody? Right. So I think, uh, uh, I think firstly, uh, in terms of uh, the overall terms, as, as we have uh, shared earlier, overall, we believe that they are within reasonable range. Um, naturally, uh, different, people will look at it uh, slightly differently, but we felt that the overall approach and the overall outcome is within reasonable range. Um, ha having, having said that, uh, we, 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 we look at, at the end of the day, uh, the uh, relative contribution as well as the relative merits for all parties. And we, as I said earlier, we also look at the qualitative aspects of this transaction as well. Okay, thanks, Mr. Go. Coming back to, to Mr. Mr. Wong, uh, William has, uh, Mr. Go has presented in terms of the potential revenue of the market share. Uh, what do you think is the potential share that uh, the combined entity can gather from this huge market? I mean, the total market is 550 billion. So that's a huge market. Yeah, uh, thanks, Wang Chen. I think the market for the uh, uh, immediate oil and gas is uh, more of a nearer term and spread over the mid term. And then for the uh, uh, renewables and new energies, probably reference to today's time will, 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 will grow 
in a much smaller pace, but it will then exponentially, exponentially grow later. And uh, I think overall, the combined entity, if we do it correct, do it well, execute our strategy correct, whereby we will able to sustain our power in terms of the existing oil and gas, able to turn that into greener. At the same time, starting to go into renewables such as wind farm and later on the renewables and so and so forth, I believe we able to reach about 5 to 15% of the market share. And, That's very uh, significant. Probably through this plan, we also able to achieve with a collaboration with uh, other uh, like-minded uh, uh, companies to work together to achieve our goal. So if I go back to your good and bad and ugly uh, narrative, this, this market share, the 5 to 10 to 15%, if you were to go it alone, it would be very challenging for Sam Marine to, to achieve that market share? Uh, yes, I would, I would want to explain a little bit why. And most of us will feel that SCM is ready. SCM has uh, uh, pivoted long time ago. I think I would like to share that we have made strategic investment and acquisitions since 2015 to align our business to the global energy transition. Also, yes, SCM has core engineering capabilities and broad suite of sustainable and renewable product solutions. But however, the market sometimes will be impacted by many, many other, other factors, such as COVID, such as uh, the uh, uh, geopolitical tension, right? And, uh, and also on the, the flip side, also accelerated by the uh, oil major who have set their vision of 2030 net carbon neutral and eventually go to 2050 target. But however, the global energy market is really evolving very quickly. And the operating landscape is getting increasingly challenging and competitive. We must not forget this. We must grow in scale and capabilities so that we are not out of we are we are not out competed in the future. Not only of today, we have to be stay resilient and to stay relevant in the future. If if we look at the potential consequences, if the proposed combination does not materialize, as I mentioned. We need a bolder transformative move today. If merger is not supported by shareholders and shareholders voted against the merger, Sanko Marine would have to navigate an even more competitive landscape where many regional players in the Chinese, the Koreans, the Japanese have either consolidated with peers or are in the process of seeking consolidation. I also want to emphasize, emphasize that if standalone, SCM response time is constrained by existing level of resources, capacity, and global reach out, outreach. SCM may find challenges to capture the immediate market turning and lose the opportunity for growth. So, however, if we think as, as, as Singapore as a homegrown marine icons, San Marine and KOM have the closest DNA. If we come together, we should have a very relative smoother transition of integration. Although we recognize that any M&A, there will be integration challenges. There's a question, Mr. Wong, on uh, reorganization before the uh, combination. Has there been one done at uh, SCM by Samcom Marine at this point in time? Uh, I think Sankop Marine has over the time has, has uh, restructured its operations internally. And we back then in 2013, we have restructured from a business centric shipyard into a, into a factory centered shipyard. And we consolidate all the businesses into a four important pillars. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we also streamline all the corporate services. And uh, then we venture into uh, different renewables uh, in initiative, lower carbon uh, footprint initiative, as well as uh, greener oil and gas, whereby we invest in a certain 
types of uh, in, uh, these uh, technologies companies. And Mr. Wong, what we, what, one, one last question for you before we go over to William to answer a question on assets contributed to the combined entity uh, between uh, Sam Marine and, and KOM. So Mr. Wong, who are the big competitors to, to Sam Marine and the combined entity? And I, I guess as, as a standalone Sam Marine, it's going to be difficult to compete with these uh, uh, competitors. So who are these competitors? I will say traditionally, Competitors, the landscape has changed from the traditional, the rig building into the offshore and now transiting, transition into the future of low carbon uh, footprint. Yes, we know our current competitor and yet we do not know who will be the competitors coming against us in the future. We all in the market is changing and try to adopt and try to innovate and try to make adjustment. If you look into oil and gas, both combined entity or individually, we have a strong, strong footing in the conversion of a APSO, LNG, floating LNG, as well as specialized shipbuilding. However, into the future, into the future, this require more of a solution-based uh, a package to the customer. The competition we will suspect will be even raised to the level of a consolidation between engineering firm with the production companies. So I think that part of it, right, the competition we cannot be uh, uh, feel complacent. We know competition is coming up. Individual all the players may not be able to compete, but they are coming together for project by project basis. For example, in the past, in the past, we only built and design our own product. Now we are also inquire other in the previous state competitor to be our yeah. vendor, and vice versa. Right? Sometimes we also let them become our customer. So going forward, more importantly is the combat entity to be able to withstand resiliencies, able to be relevant into the future. The competition can be anyone stronger. We know they are growing both in the Far East as well as also in the Europe now. And soon we may see that the competition may slowly come out from Indochina's countries, probably also from the countries like in uh, 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 North America as well, in the longer term. Thanks, Mr. Wong. Uh, let's now go over to, to Mr. Go. A couple of questions, one on the uh, contribution assets to the combined entity. And the second question uh, is that there seems to be a perception that KOM has a stronger bargaining power with regards to the combination. Uh, while we're getting William to, to muse on these answers on these questions, uh, Mr. Wong, we'll come back to you on questions about has other options been considered besides the combination? Uh, who will take over the new combined entity? entity? Uh, will it be KOM, a combination of KOM and SCM? So some of these more, more practical questions in terms of the combined entity. So over to you, uh, Mr. Go. The first question on contribution of assets. So the question is, uh, why is uh, Sam Marine contributing more assets to the combined entity and compared to KOM? Uh, thanks, Wanjun. Um, in, in terms of uh, the assets, uh, basically when it comes to the merger, basically both parties bring in whatever their existing total assets uh, uh, to the table. And uh, in, in our case, uh, we, we bring, because we continue in the business, we want to continue in the business, and therefore, we bring uh, all our assets in, which is natural. And I would say that all these assets are then the basis for generating all those cash flows that is being taken into consideration in a merger valuation. So, so it is not a case whereby you can choose and select and take away some assets, for example, because if you do that, then uh, uh, as a company, 
to be able to generate all those cash flows, those requires the assets. So you cannot have a situation of recognizing the cash flow for valuation and not having some of the assets included in that sense. So, so for us, it is uh, all the assets in and uh, the, 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 the cash flow generation and contribution is being recognized accordingly. In the case of Kappa, they started off in the first place uh, uh, having uh, lesser assets because they have been adopting a relatively asset lighter model, right? And uh, in this case here, technically all the assets should be in, but in the, in the objective of having the CE, the combined entity, to be more resilient, uh, uh, the key question is that, what is it within the capital offshore and marine that is not constructive to the combined entity? And one big area, obviously, is uh, all the stranded risks of KOM, which is why, as I mentioned earlier, the stranded risks are being taken out. And more importantly, as I say, is the associated uh, 4 over billion of uh, payables are also taken out as well, so that the uh, KOM that's coming in to the CE is a lot more light in terms of its uh, debt load, right? And also some of the other loss-making entities uh, that you see, uh, like Flotel, uh, 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 and dynamic, those are also excluded as well. Mm -hmm. So in overall scheme of things, uh, the uh, assets coming in to the combined entity are those that contribute to the cash flow, factor into the valuation, and more importantly, is constructive for the CE to grow and take on the global competition going forward. So the, the assets that's contributed to the CE or combined entity is a very structured decision it is indeed. And, and all things being equal in the normal merger, all parties bring everything. But in this case here, we have the benefit of removing some of those assets, loss-making or stranded assets uh, that can cause uh, potential challenges to the combined entity post-merger. We have those excluded. And that is why with those stranded assets excluded, uh, you actually have a lower risk uh, KOM coming into the combined entity which will therefore be helpful and beneficial for SCM shareholders. Thanks, Mr. Go. Uh, a couple of uh, the questions that seems to, to point to the fact that San Marine is always disadvantaged in terms of the, the, the combination that uh, there's, uh, San Marine is a great company, but uh, there still seems to be some perception that it is disadvantaged. Maybe you can comment on that, uh, Mr. Go. Um, what we would say is that uh, if you look at some of the metrics like uh, NTA, uh, it, it is understandable for people to say we have a higher NTA yep. and they have a lower NTA. How do we end up uh, you know, in a lower exchange ratio? We, we understand that. Uh, the, the only thing I say is that in a merger, you are really looking at the long term and the long term for the nature of our business, as I shared earlier, what is most important is the uh, projected uh, future cash flow generation contribution by each company. And uh, we, we, we agree to accept that approach because that is an objective uh, and reasonable approach. And so that drives the valuation and not the NTA. You know, and, and, and in, a way, in a way, when we come to a merger, you have to be objective about uh, the methodology and the approach. You, you, don't, you, you, you don't have the benefit of uh, picking and choosing because if you pick and choose, the other party will do likewise then how to arrive at a set of terms that is in both party mutually acceptable. So, so we, we go in obviously with a set of uh, objectives, but when we, when we come up with uh, the overall uh, uh, package deals and the terms, we look at it and so long as it is uh, within reasonable approach and reasonable range and uh, for the bigger, longer term objective of getting this uh, uh, merger through, so that we can have a longer term and a more sustainable future. Uh, overall, we felt that the overall approach was acceptable. There's a question from Mr. Alan Lee, the, uh, Mr. Go, uh, on, on the fairness of the, uh, the, uh, the combination. So, so in, in no uncertain terms, uh, Mr. Alan Lee has said that it's very fair for Kappa, but very unfair for Sam Marine. Would you care to comment on that? I think, as I mentioned earlier, uh, different parties will look at it from different lenses and will find that it is fair or unfair. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have to agree to a commonly 
uh, acceptable and also established methodology. So in this case here is the discounted cash flow methodology. And, and this this year rightfully factor in not just the upfront immediate term, but also the medium and longer term value contribution by both companies. And we felt that this is actually a more objective approach, especially within the consideration that for our industry is cyclical and a cycle typically can be anything from eight to 10 years or even more. So, so essentially this approach is uh, more objective and fair and we subscribe to it. And what does the board and management feel on a, on a, on the overall basis? Once again, uh, Mister Go, what so, what? so yeah. So as I said earlier, of course, management and board wishes to for for the ratio to be uh, improved further. That's for sure. And likewise, the other party will also think of that way. But in overall scheme of things, as we look at the longer term, we look at the rationale for this uh, uh, merger. We, we look at both the quantitative as well as the qualitative aspects. We felt that the overall outcome and the, and, and, and the, the merger ratio is within reasonable range. And management and board stand behind this reasonable range. Uh, that is correct. Thank you, Mr. Goh, for that uh, statement. Now, let's, let's go over to, to Mr. Wong. Uh, some of the more strategic uh, questions like, who will run the combined entity? To, uh, have the other op options been considered? Other mergers? Uh, has uh, Sam, Sam Marine prepared itself for the, the, uh, the combination? So, so Mr. Wong, maybe uh, can I hear from you? Uh, have other options been considered? Uh, <clears throat> okay, this is a good question. So, uh, the, the final, uh, uh, probably the... Uh, uh, setup will be uh, will be announced at a later stage. Uh, but I would like to say that uh, uh, both SEM, KOM, individually running a very sound and good operations and have a very, very effective of uh, reaching out to the market. But at the same time, we also know the ambition of this combined entity is not only doing the current work well, but also wants to grow and transit into the future right, of the oil and gas requirement. So there are a lot of elements inside depending on the stages. Upon, upon the immediate combination, the most important is we must ensure that the current work, the current uh, progress, current bidding will not be affected. This is important. I think going forward, how then we will look into how we immediately right, has a synergy in how to increase capacity and capabilities. These are the real questions both, both right, Sanko Marine and the future combat entity will have to think very deeply. I will say that in terms of the management, it will be a joint management in the sense that we need to have one integrated team. A team whereby we will not lose out from what we had planned from the very beginning. We don't want to lose any capabilities, any competencies, as well as any good effect arising from this proposed combination. But going forward, we also depending on the target state and how the market has evolved. There will be a necessity for us to bring in expertise, to bring in different diversity into the company because we are running a global, real global stage of, of a, a company whereby we are heading towards into the future. No longer back in 20, 30 years ago, we started as a ship repair or the most we reached to the level of constructing our own checkups, our own semi-submersible drilling units. We are talking about in the future, new energies, talking about uh, uh, floating wind farm, talking about any possible right, a sustainable solutions 
for fuel production. So in short, I will say that the management should be coming from those who are running the business and those who are really on the floor, on the ground, and whereby they know where is the hard point, where are the difficulties, and especially when the two companies come together, there is a lot of effort to keep everyone as one and integrate going forward. Thanks, Mr. Wong. I'll go back to you, uh, Mr. Go. There's quite a fair bit of questions on operational matters, uh, cash flow, incurrence of debt, uh, operational issues. So I'd like to ask Mr. Go, in your slide you, you presented, you put one plus one is greater than two. How would you characterize the, in terms of the operational efficiencies for the new entity in terms of the day-to-day -day operations? Is it going to be a, a SAM Marine 2.0 or is it going to be a, a real step change? For, for shareholders in, so shareholders asking share price, mm. incurrence of debt. Maybe you'd like uh, to share some light on that, Mr. Go. Thanks, thanks, Wan Chen. So, so I think as I shared earlier in the uh, first slide, uh, the uh, operational and financial synergies are quite clear cut. Uh. I think, I think uh, the most important factor to look at is really the, uh, industry landscape and a competition landscape in particular. Mm -hmm. I think when, when, we, when we embark on our strategy, SCM by ourselves, when we embark on a strategy over the last 10 years, building our new years, acquiring technology, etc., we certainly adopt the approach that we are able to take on the global competition and achieve sustainable returns over the long term. But I think what happens over the last five to seven years when we see how the industry downturn buys, and we see how energy transition takes its uh, its uh, its uh, its hold and uh, and continue to uh, progress very significantly, and, and that drives the entire industry landscape in terms of how to uh, to thrive and compete. And you add on all those global competitors com uh, uh, combining themselves to build further scale, and. In a way, it is a consistent thinking mindset that with the evolving industry challenges and with uh, how, how the, uh, the industry landscape has progressed, there is a need for greater scale and a greater need for focus and also to adopt a longer term perspective of things. So therefore, by ourselves, while we can try to navigate and take on the global challenges, but certainly as a combined entity, uh, it's a lot more sustainable and a lot more safer in that sense. So, so operationally, uh, I don't wish to repeat the slides uh, information are there uh, on, the, on the fourth column there. Uh, and the benefits to SEM directly is on the fifth column, as you can see there. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, uh, one of the key drivers of growth is also financing. And, and uh, with, with uh, banks generally more supportive of a combined entity because they see that Singapore, like the global competitors, uh, the Singapore players are combined. And so therefore, with a greater strength, better able to compete, generally speaking, banks will be more positive and supportive. And, and that augurs well for uh, the, uh, the future growth because you need the working capital to, uh, to, uh, to uh, take on the orders and execute the orders. So let me pause here, Wan Chen, for your next question. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mr. Goh. Uh, what would be the one single thing that would characterize the, the operations of the new combined entity? What's, what's going to be the, the thing that stops you from being this, the same old, same old again? Is uh, it going to be the people? Is it going to be the, 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 the large size? What can I as a shareholder look forward to? What's the exciting part? Yeah, I, I think... Firstly, you can, you can look forward to basically the combined footprint and scale, and therefore the, the, the reach to customers as well. Uh, essentially, you, you, have, you have the commercial teams hunting currently uh, separate customers, separate region. But when you combine together, you have the benefit of a cross synergies, cross referral, uh, 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 different customer needing different products that the other party may be able to uh, deliver and vice versa. So, 
So you will expect the combined entity as we have also announced, you will have a new name as well as new branding and be a lot more targeted uh, into the uh, renewables as well as a new energy while focusing on greener O&M solutions at the same time because the potential continues to be there. So, so there, will be, there will be a significant uh, 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 clarity and focus, especially in all these new areas. And, and that's really one key factor why you do the combi because you have the scale and the scope to then be very focused and targeted and to be able to uh, take on those opportunities as and when they surface in the foreseeable years. Thanks, Mr. Go. Now over back to, to Mr. Wong, some of the more strategic uh, uh, questions. Uh, how, how ready is uh, Sam Marine to, to go into the, the merger? It's a good question. I think uh, SDM is ready to go for the merger. And uh, uh, why I say so? Because we know where is the transition point of the market. There's a need for us to be ready for the future, but to reach there, we must know that we must have the resiliency to stay on when the markets become very challenging. We also earmark and plan some years back the transition from the benign water checkup going into a diversification in different areas and also into the different technology companies that we acquire the different IP able to house the offshore application such as circular how as well as as, as well as the uh, gravy flow and so on. We know, we know by doing so, also the nature are different. And we're not able to capture all this by ourselves. It's impossible. And whether SCM is ready or not, I think SCM is ready both in the spectrum of where we should be heading to. We want to be involved in the green ONM renewables mm. as well as new energy. We have restructured internally or in terms of operation that we are able to acquire technologies also at the same time able to merge with companies. I think in terms of, of, uh, of uh, operations for this particular merger, I will say that the DNA are the closest. If we talk about in Singapore, there's no other DNA similar to SEM and KOM. And you know, globally, right, we also face some differentiation in terms of DNA. Both KOM and SEM has a very strong engineering base. We are all both offshore marine engineering company, and we should be able to manage this. For SEM, we are ready. There's going to be a new name, uh, Mr. Wong, for the uh, new combined entity. Uh, is, is there a lot of work to be done in preparation for that? I think there will be work to be done. Uh, 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 of course, this has to be also aligned with the progress of, of the development post uh, definitive agreement and also seeking the, uh, the shareholders approval. Uh, they, they are preparation work being done. Right, thanks Mr. Wong. Now let's go back to, to Mr. Go. There's quite a few questions on <coughs> share price. Uh, I know this, this will be challenging to, to, uh, to either answer them or even to address them. I'm mindful and respectful of that uh, Mr. Go. So, so maybe you want to address if you can uh, some of the uh, shareholders' questions on uh, what will be the share price, how will it be affected, dividends. So at the end of the day, the shareholders are worried about the, uh, uh, the, the dollars and cents. Thanks, Wanjian. Um, thanks, shareholders, for all these uh, questions. It's quite understandable that you like to uh, see how the share price trend may move. Uh, but uh, as, as you can understand, you know, it, it is, it is uh, um, 
we are not in a position to uh, speculate on uh, share price trends going forward. But what we would say is that uh, if you first look at the, uh, how uh, the share price have trended uh, since the, um, the uh, last price issue, uh, it sense uh, with the uh, proposed uh, merger, generally speaking, you'll find that share price have trended upwards. Lah. But I think more importantly, is for all shareholders to understand the rationale, the strong rationale for the uh, for the combined uh, for the combination, and the reason why because uh, it's only through the combination that uh, the two Singapore players combined can take on the global competition a lot more effectively, and I think this is going to be the key driver for the future share price of the combined entity. Is that both parties uh, individually perform well, combined together perform even better. And that is why we, we highlighted the one plus one should get more than two. And, and this is where the quality and consistency of earnings becomes a lot more clearer. The synergies take into effect and therefore combined together, it will result in a better performance overall. And that should drive uh, the, uh, the better share price of the combined entity going forward. But specific share price, I hope you understand that we are not in a position to comment. Wanchen? totally understand that. Now, what would you see as the uh, the issue in terms of uh, shareholders and also the markets? It seems to perceive that we're coming in a weak position, that the combined entity seems to be more of the same. There's concern that it's going to be a penny stock. Uh, there's concern that it's not strong enough. It's not, not uh, it's too late, uh, too little, too late in terms of getting the market share. It is in a weak position. What's your, what's your view on that, Mr. Go? Um, not at all. I think uh, you will find that historically both companies have been uh, uh, resilient and uh, have been able to stand on their own and take on the global competition. But having said that, as we look at the most recent years uh, uh, development, energy transition, global competition landscape, this is where logical parties uh, believe that it is it is good and timely to actually come together and, and strengthen each other so that uh, together as Singapore Inc., we are a lot more resilient and a lot more able to take on the global competition. We have been able to do in the past. We believe we're able to do so individually, but combined together all the more so. And, and this is where we, we see the standpoint of all our stakeholders, especially our shareholders. Uh, shareholders are concerned about how the energy transition, how the, the global competition is affecting uh, Singapore players. And we are responding by, by saying that uh, we believe that when we combine together, we'll be able to take on the global competition. Uh, earlier, there was a question of 10%, 20% market share out of the 550 yep. billion of a market share. We hope to be able to achieve more. And the only way to achieve more is to be able to combine together, leverage each other's strengths, and take on the competition better. And there are synergies on both sides that, that you see in, a, in the slide. And, and this is the, uh, the best formula, we believe, right, to uh, generate value for all our shareholders over the longer term. And the share price should then reflect accordingly, whether it is uh, in terms of share price or whether in terms of dividends. Once we generate the, uh, the profitability, the dividends naturally will follow as well. Wan Chen? Thanks, Mr. Go on that. Uh, let's go back to, to Mr. Wong. We talked initially about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, if Sam Marine were to go to this alone and the combination doesn't happen, uh, would it be a, a, a situation where the past comes back to, to the present, meaning that more rights issue, uh, you'll be challenging, share price will be struggling? What's your view on that, uh, Mr. Wong? I think... Uh, uh... Uh, it is it is uh, uh, difficult to predict the market is coming uh, or the market uh, is, is, is uh, uh, going against us. But I think what we are what we are looking at if we are to withstand alone, definitely it is a very very difficult situation when things repeat itself where the market shape uh, the, the oil price, the, the, the uh, energy market collapse. I think this, this is something for us to think about, about the possible uh, risk that may come along. 
and we should prepare for it and what is the best way for us to, to, to be more, more resilient. I think uh, 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 on this on 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 this on this uh, position, I think the most important is if there is no combination, then SEM has to take a longer path to achieve what it wants. At the same time, may also subject to possible right, uh, uh, challenges uh, uh, what we have experienced in the past. Do we need this deal, Mr. Wong? The uh, South Marine need this? I think overall, if you look at what our presentation explanation, and San Marine needs this deal, and San Marine needs something a bold step to make sure that we can continue what we have started back in 2015. We're able to restructure ourselves. We're able to ensure that the changing environment, especially the, the, the situation of the climate requirement and the changes in oil and gas uh, landscape, and all these are affecting all the books. I think for us, for us in order to able to stand, able to be withstand the storm in the future, the combined entity definitely will able to uplift SEM in the shortest time, especially with the current situation where the market may turn to be hotter, then we have the ability to deliver in terms of capacity and capabilities. And if we were to do it alone, there is always, always a resource constraint in any company when they are standing alone. So in short, I think uh, this is something SCM uh, should look into. We need to ensure that what it takes to de-risk the future uncertainties as well as meeting the challenges. Thanks, Mr. Wong. So status quo is, is definitely not tenable from uh, Sam Marine's point of view. Yes, I will say though, I will say so, it's not tenable. Thank you for that. There's one question, uh, Mr. Go, on uh, on the uh, operating leverage of the combined entity uh, capital management. Uh, would, would you like to address that? Sure. So in terms of the uh, operating leverage, basically what we are saying is that if you have, if you build a uh, new large yard and the yard costs money, and so therefore there will be the annual depreciation. So it's public info that uh, for our yards, our annual depreciation is close to 200 million per annum. It is important for the yard therefore to be able to uh, execute a lot of projects so that the, the projects can then absorb this depreciation. So operating leverage essentially means that you need to have a commensurate level activities to be able to uh, feed the yard so the yard depreciation can be well absorbed by a higher level of orders. So more orders, the depreciation, the same depreciation is allocated to more projects. Overall, the depreciation charge to each project uh, is going to be lower. So overall, the margins will then improve accordingly. So that's a, 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 a simple illustration of uh, the benefit of operating leverage, whereby large assets requires more orders to, uh, to share the cost of the asset. In terms of the uh, capital management, um, you're referring to the, uh, why don't you repeat the question regarding the share buyback? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So on, on the share buyback, uh, that one is a one-off that we do. It's very much to uh, cater to our our share, uh, 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 treasury share needs, where we pay to our our staff or our, our directors the uh, the uh, the uh, the director speeds in the form of shares. So mm -hmm. it is uh, it is a share buyback specifically on a need to basis. Uh, we don't have a so called generic share buyback program currently. I think the key thing here is that uh, we shouldn't be thinking about share buyback because uh, in the current market situation, uh, it is more important to actually preserve our cash liquidity to meet the needs of the company's operational needs, rather than talking about uh, share buybacks, which uh, we know that 
companies and other countries do, you know, is a form of share buyback to increase the share price. But for us, uh, we believe it's more prudent and important to preserve our liquidity, our cash for operation needs rather than for share buyback. I hope that helps. Pancho? Definitely, uh, Mr. Go. Thank you for that. Uh, we are we're going to have a hard stop at 6.30. So, uh, dear shareholders, uh, please do uh, keep answer, uh, putting your questions there. But I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Wong and Mr. Go uh, the last few questions, at least from my perspective. Um, what will happen tomorrow if the merger doesn't go through? Maybe let's, let's take a situation where it doesn't happen and all the due diligence is done and then the vote doesn't push it through and tomorrow you wake up in the morning, the combination is not on. What would you do? One should maybe financially, let me very quickly say that uh, uh, with or without the merger, right? we as a uh, independent listed company naturally will continue to operate, right, as usual, yep. right, and, 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 and that is the case. And, and uh, people may ask, does that mean that in six months' time or 12 months' time, you're going to have liquidity issues? The short answer is no, right? We, mm -hmm. we, we continue to be able to operate at least for the next 12 months as what well. we have also represented uh, following our, our last price issue. The, the key thing here for our shareholders is that as management and board, our duty is to see the trend going forward and identify the strategic risk and challenges that the company face, the company faces, and, and, and therefore take preemptive steps to be able to address all those challenges early so that we do not wait until when things is too late, then only start trying to take immediate action. That will be too late. So for our standpoint, while we continue to be able to operate at least for the next 12 months and beyond, what we see is that the industry landscape is moving so fast that we have to react and we have to be preemptive in that sense and therefore strategically uh, 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 working on and supporting this merger because this merger basically built our resilience and our, our better ability to take on the global competition and generate a sustainable returns. So um, if the merger doesn't go through, we BAU will do our very best to continue to operate as much as possible in the foreseeable future. But with the merger, we've got the support of the bankers better, our shareholders, all our shareholders better, and we're in a better position, not just to survive, but to also write on a lot more confidently into the future. So if I can summarize that, Mr. Go, you'll be challenging. If we, if we wake up tomorrow morning, the combination is off the table. It's going to be extremely challenging for San Marine. Uh, the word challenging here, extremely challenging, also got a time dimension. Uh, yep. Immediately, we will continue to write the challenges and be able to continue to operate, execute our orders. But I think the longer term, the extreme challenges, as you rightly put it, there are things that we have to bear in mind now so that we can write on those challenges as and when they occur and take them on. Thanks, Mr. Go. There's a couple more questions on the floor and I'll let you muse on them, Mr. Go, while I go to Mr. Wong. So, Mr. Wong, from your perspective, you wake up tomorrow morning and the combination does not happen for whatever reason. The vote doesn't go through. What will be your reaction? Business as usual is uh, going to be challenging. It will definitely be very challenging. And, and also, we have to reassess the risk profile, the strategic risk, for the coming risk for the company and also the opportunity loss that could have achieved with the combination uh, with KOM. I think these are the immediate questions in my mind from to handle the mid to longer term. And unfortunately, this time frame is getting narrower right, because of the environment today we are in, there is a lot of uh, uncertainties still grooming up. Uh, we all know we just recover from have a have a break from the COVID nineteen, and immediately we have this geopolitical tension. Supply chain get affected, and going forward, 
the inflation issues will come in and all the customers right, will also have their plan change. And of course, there are some who have a longer term plan, right? The work remains. But however, as an operation, they will definitely has a lot more challenges compared into a normal pass. So I think for me, if it doesn't pass, the immediately the risk profile will has to be reviewed. Our plan, mid-term longer bank plan for the product development, also including right, what are the reach out and what are the limit we can do in terms of the size of the work we are going to take. Can I ask you, Mr. Wong, do you have a contingency plan? Basically, there's no contingency plan. As I say, it is good, bad, or ugly. Okay. And I like your, your, your focus on that, uh, Mr. Wong. So back to you, Mr. Go. A couple of last questions from the floor. Uh, resources from that uh, Samcom Marine needs from Capo. Uh, I think this is a very broad question. And then the more specific question on moving NTA down uh, to 0 0.07 cents and moving up with up to uh, 13 cents. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. while you're musing on that, Mr. Wong and uh, Mr. Go, uh, the, the final questions I'd like to pose to both you and Mr. Wong is that you wake up tomorrow morning and the combination goes through more on the positive note. What will be the step change that will make shareholders excited if it goes through tomorrow as opposed to not going through? So not going through is really is not tenable. But uh, if it goes through, what is the, the, the upside? So Mr. Go, maybe you can answer these two questions on NTA and the resources. Sure. So in terms of the resource front, um, this is, this is not something whereby uh, we are looking at specific resources, but looking at the overall entity. I think uh, all of us should know that uh, Capital Offshore and Marine uh, is one of the uh, largest players in the past as, uh, for the key segments that they focus on. And, and they are a large player uh, globally. Right? Uh, they do have their global reach. So take one example is that... Uh, the, the U.S. market, for example, uh, for renewable energy and also for gas solutions is uh, very, very significant in the foreseeable years, right? And uh, SEM doesn't have a, uh, a, a significant, we don't have a yacht uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, Kepler have a yacht in the U.S. So from a Jones X perspective, whereby you need certain kind of, certain kind of, uh, of uh, vessels have to be built in the U.S., having a U.S. yacht would be an advantage. So this would be just one example of uh, uh, specific resources where, where SEM can benefit from uh, the uh, resources of Kepler. But let me just say and take a step back to say that in a merger, right, there will be common resources, there will be different resources, and uh, all are helpful in terms of uh, complementing one another or even if they're common resources to strengthen one another and to be able to use for each other's orders. So, so I hope that helps in terms of uh, resources allocation. In terms of the, uh, the NTA, uh, we are looking at a, a growth of NTA, uh, how long it takes. This is a question of uh, how long it takes to generate profits to increase the NTA of the company. Uh, this is a forecast question, which um, I, I won't be able to specifically answer. But what I would say is that uh, certainly the combined entity in a better position generate more revenue and profits in the future. And uh, to get back, to a better NTA days, shorter, run a longer period of time. Wanchen? Thank you, Mr. Go. So, so back to Mr. Wong and then to Mr. Go and the, the final question before we, we wrap up for the day and get uh, Mr. David Gerald to have our closing address. So Mr. Wong, if you wake up tomorrow morning and the combination go through, what assurance do you have for, for the combined entity shareholders to believe that this it won't be business as usual, that you'll be able to compete, get 10 to 15% of the market share potentially, uh, that they wake up to a, a brand new, exciting, not just a, a San Marine 2.0, but it's a really combined entity that makes a difference globally. Yes, if, if the uh, 
uh, combined entity come into, come into uh, reality, immediately the next day, immediately there's a flash of the combined entity as well as for sample marine shareholders. They will definitely become a brand new SCM. It's not SCM 2.0. It is a combined entity that it will pursue its goal with more resilient and irrelevant in the future. And to start off, we can see that the strong home base of all the uh, order books and all the capacity and capabilities will eventually integrate as one. And it will take time, but it will not take long time for us because it is the same DNA. I will say that, right, when that happens, all the equations, right, will be behind us. What we look at to create values, unlock values, and to stay relevant into 2030 and stay relevant, be profitable until 2050. We have the capacity, we have the resource pool, and we have the expertise to grow from <laughs> height to height. And, and that's why you characterize this opportunity as a one plus one in greater than two. That yes. it is a combination of equals, and both bring value to the table, both have challenges, but both coming together, uh, it is an opportunity of a lifetime. Both see this as an as a opportunity that makes sense and is greater than two. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Thank uh, you. Mr. Goh, from your perspective, what, what do you see as one plus one greater than two? What's that magic that shareholders should get excited about as opposed to wake up in the morning and then business as usual? I think my CEO has spoken, but let me just say that uh, if the deal goes through, what it does is remove a certain level of risk, uncertainty uh, regarding this situation. I think uh, long-term shareholders will be able to see that the challenges are there in the horizon. And therefore, this merger, if it doesn't go through, uh, those challenges will continue to be present and, and will need to be addressed. So if the merger goes through, the uncertainty are removed. I, I, can, I can share certainly that from the bank standpoint, uh, if the, the merger goes through, they will certainly, and they have indicated that they are more positive with the merger, which means they are left less positive without the merger. And I think from the, uh, also from the customer standpoint, they also want certainty. And if they see the uh, combined expertise of the two companies coming together to be put to bear for the customer, I think customers will also welcome it. So in a sense, removing the risk, strengthening ourselves, moving on with a clearer footing to take on the future challenges and to also write on all the huge opportunities coming forward. I think all of us will be a lot more optimistic, sure, confident to write the future together. Thanks, William, for that uh, closing remark. Very, very encouraging. And now maybe I hand over to Mr. Wong for his closing remarks for today's uh, dialogue session. Mr. Wong, please. Thank you. As today's session draws to a close, I would like to convey our thanks to you, our shareholders, for joining this dialogue. We hope that you found this session meaningful and have gained a better understanding of the proposed combination. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the support of shareholders who have newly entered our share register. We have seen more than, six, more than a 16% increase in the number of shareholders from our early March shareholding. Thank you for your support on the equity front. We would like also to express our appreciation to Sias, David and Wan Chen. Thank you for hosting this dialogue. This is a merger of the equal. They are financial advisors input, negotiations done, due diligence done, and SCM takes what it needs and what it can give and what it shouldn't take in to conclude this as a package deal that can be forwarded to a shareholder's approval. 
as I mentioned today, this combination means the good, the bad, and the ugly of the outcome. We believe the proposed combination is the best way to deliver long-term values creation for all stakeholders. We would like to seek the support of our shareholders. We have planned for additional dialogue over the next few months and continue to welcome interactions with all shareholders to continue to build a deeper appreciation of the proposed combination. Thank you all for joining today's dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. And let's now have uh, Mr. David Jarrell, President, CEO, Founder of CIAS, to uh, provide us with his closing remarks. Well, shareholders of Suncorp Marine, you have heard the management this evening and you have had a robust discussion during the Q&A session. Very relevant and important questions were asked and the management was prepared to give you the answers that you were expecting. Sias is encouraged to know that shareholders are very engaged and interested in knowing this proposed combination before you make an informed decision, investment decision. Shareholders would need to consider carefully the different possible outcomes, a combination or no combination. Foremost in your mind must be the question, what happens if this proposed combination fails? You have the answers now. SEM wants you to enjoy the benefits of creating a premier global player for the offshore renewables, new energy and cleaner o &M solutions market. And that is how the global trend is. Do note that the shareholders circular is not out yet and shareholders are encouraged to do your own due diligence and arm yourselves with more information. SIAS will work towards organizing another engagement for your benefit with the shareholders and management after the shareholders circular in relation to the proposed combination is dispatched. With this, I thank Mr. Wong, Mr. Go, and Mr. Lo for this session, which has been very educational, informative. And I, I'm sure that if there is another session, you will all come back. With this, I wish you a good evening. Enjoy that evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you, Wanchu. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.